All right, hello everyone. I'm gonna do a quick Excel tutorial proving the Monty Hall problem and why it's always better to switch doors. If you don't know what the Monty Hall problem is, I'm gonna put a link right here to a nice video that explains it very well. Um, some people, after watching that video, they still do not understand it and they still don't believe it and they still think that you should stay with the same door. So I've done this before and I did 100,000 rows this was several years ago when I did this. Hopefully I can remember how to do everything. This time I'm just going to do 100 different trials. I'm going to have a random door selected each time. I'm going to have the money behind a random door and the, the door that's eliminated that has nothing behind it is also going to be random. Is that right? Anyway, we'll work through this. Okay, so I set up my columns. First is going to be trial. And we're going to go, we're going to do 100 trials because 100,000 takes quite a while to process. Okay, so first cell, we're going to choose, we're going to, uh, we're going to pick door. And this is going to be, uh, we're going to set this up using a rand between 1 and 3. So these are going to be our random doors that are picked. <coughs> I'm going to paste values on this so this doesn't change every single time. So this is going to be the door that we pick for the first. Um, next, the money is going to be behind door. We do this the same way, rand between one and three. These are going to be, that's going to be the door with the money. So now we can do a little check here. Um, and we're going to say equals if this cell equals this cell when else nothing. So let's see how many times we won. By, it should be about 33%. So out of 100, we can do it this way too. <coughs> oh, no, we can't. Um, count A. Nope. Count if. Range. Thirty-four. Look at that. Thirty-four percent. No, not thirty-four thousand or thirty-four hundred. So, thirty-four out of the one hundred were the winning doors. Okay. So, that's simple. That's the simple part. So now, now comes the little tricky part to um, code in. So we're going to eliminate a door. We're going to eliminate the door that doesn't have money. Or if they picked the door that has the money, we're going to randomly um, eliminate one of the other two doors. So the way I do this, um, so we're going to eliminate a door. This is where it gets kind of tricky because you can't, if, if the money's behind two, you can't do like a random one or three. You, ha you have to have a range. So the way I've done this in the past is we're going to do rand between, again, I like this, one and two. So there's only two doors that can be eliminated. And of those two doors, we're going to eliminate one of these. Paste values, because I like doing that. <coughs> so now, door two elim the actual door number one two three so this is if if the picked door equals uh, let me think here if the picked door 
we can we can simply eliminate the door that's picked here because it's, it's either one or two. There's the first one. If this <clears throat> equals door one, we are going to eliminate this plus one. You see what I did? Because we can't eliminate door number one if they pick number one. So if it says eliminate two, we're just going to add one to it, eliminate three. So we're going to eliminate the second door that hasn't been picked. If it's one and they chose door number one, we're going to eliminate the first door that hasn't been picked, which is door number two. So that does that. So now is the tricky one. Um, if the pick door equals two, no, if and the pick door equals two and the eliminate door equals two, then we're going to eliminate the second door that wasn't picked and in that order with the person, the contestant picking door number two, the second door that wasn't picked is door number three. And that leaves the only other option, which is if it says to eliminate door one and they picked door two, the first door that wasn't picked will be door one. That's the only thing that that can be. And we're going to close off all these parentheses and fill this down. And we can do a quick little visual here to check. Okay, contestant picked door three. We're going to eliminate door two. Door two is eliminated. Contestant picked door one. Door to eliminate one. Actual door to eliminate is the door number two. Um, and the two is where it's complicated. Contestant picks door number two. We're going to eliminate the second door that wasn't picked, which is door number three. So let's look for door two with a one. Where is it? Two and one. There's a two and one. Contestant picked door number two. We're going to eliminate the first door that wasn't picked, which is door one. <coughs> so now we can see if the... Oh, well, we can't do that, can we? Because we are eliminating the door that has the money. Okay, that's not an issue. We're still going to use this here, but we are only going to use this that we just wrote if the contestant chose the door with the money. Because then it doesn't matter. So what we want to do here is we want to make this another if. <laughs> Nested ifs. We're going to say if money door equals customer pick or uh, customer contestant pick door. That's when we can do this. If they did not pick a money door, this is where we need to um, fill something in. I'll put a zero there for now. <coughs> so these should there should be a bunch of zeros wherever the contestant picked the wrong door. So door two, money's in door three, it's now a zero. Um, contestant picked three, money's in door three. That's okay to still eliminate the door from our equation. So now we gotta go back and we gotta change this. So if the money is in, okay. So let's do the same sort of thing, but we're gonna say, we're gonna put another if in here. If, take that out right now. If the uh, contestant door greater than or equal to money door, so if it's different, we are going to eliminate the, the only door that doesn't have money that they picked. Here we go. So if it doesn't equal that, we're going to do this. So if and pick door equals three <coughs> and money door equals two, then we are going to eliminate one. If pick door equals Let's see, we did three. Let's go backwards. 
if um, oh no we actually have to do all so if pictor equals three if and pictor equals three and money door equals one then we're going to eliminate door two oops eliminate door two if and mm, uh, contestant pick door equals two and money door equals one then we are going to eliminate door three if and pick door equals two and money door equals let's see we did one before if money door equals three then we're going to eliminate door one <coughs> so we're two-thirds of the way there now if and contestant picked door one money is behind door two we're going to eliminate door three and um, the only other possible combination is to eliminate door two so we can just put that there instead of writing another if. so now let's close all these off and double check our work so the money door should never equal the door to eliminate so let's check that if door to eliminate equals the money door error else nothing so fingers crossed oh yeah okay so we're good the door to eliminate is now accurate so now we're going to say switch or well <clears throat> we know if they don't switch if they don't switch they're still they still have 33 percent odds from the very beginning it doesn't it doesn't really matter but this is where they want to switch because by switching they switch up to 66 percent so now switched to is this going to be another huge if i believe so so we're gonna we're definitely gonna switch so if pick door equals if and if pick door equals three and eliminated door equals one then we're gonna switch to door two if and pick door equals three and eliminated door now equals two we're going to switch to door three if now so we did um, third door as original pick now we're going to do second door as original pick if and original pick door equals two and <coughs> eliminated door equals one we're going to switch to door three if and original pick door same thing it is two this time door eliminated door is now three we're going to switch to door one if and okay so now we have original pick door of two out of the way so now we're going to do original pick door of one if original pick door equals one and eliminated door equals two we're going to switch to door three and the only other thing is if original pick door is one and the eliminated door is three we're going to switch to door two so now we can close all this off <coughs> so we're switching to these doors so they should never be the switch to door should never equal the eliminate door or the pick door. So let's let's double check that equals the, uh, equals if this equals this. That's going to be an error. And if 
this equals the eliminated door. That's also going to be an error. But if not, there's nothing. Close that off. So all these shells, cells should be playing. Oh no. Oh no. Why is that? <coughs> what happened here? Pick door three. It's always on the pick door three. See that? All the errors are on the pick door three. And they switch to pick door three. So it's somewhere in this formula where. Right here. If the pick door equals three and the illuminated door equals one, door two. If pick door is three and eliminated door is two, this needs to be one. Oh, we found it. Isn't that nice when you find it that quick? There we go. Perfect. Now, new winner so this is simple now from here on out we got it so if the n the new door that we picked that we switched to equals oops if the new door that we switched to equals the door with the money win else nothing okay there we go look at all those wins winner winner Okay, so originally we had 33%. So count if range new, even though it wouldn't matter for that. Win should be about 66 and 66% 66 by switching doors, you increase your odds by 33% or thereabout. Um, normally it's going to be 33% you found this interesting it was sort of a good refresher for me because it's been years since I did this before and actually now that I know Excel a lot more it was easier this time the first time it was pretty complicated the way I did it and in my other one I did a hundred thousand rows and I also had a button where you could re-randomize the doors so when you clicked the um, button it ran a macro that would remove these cells Add in a formula for a range between 1 and 3. Do the same thing for the door with the money. And it would copy the values, paste the values back so it wouldn't rerun it every single time. And you could rerun it and you would consistently get 33% original door winner and 66% for winner by switching doors or thereabout. It's always really, really close. So, hope you found this entertaining. Thanks for watching. Bye.